Hey guys, it's Aguanzi Jormar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to tell you that today I'm going to be covering AR Foundation. One more time in this episode, I'm going to walk you through image tracking. The difference with this one versus the other is that we're going to be basically adding textures in runtime. So as opposed to in the previous video, I already had a reference image library that had already images added, which means that during the build, those get packaged for iOS or Android, and then they are made available for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a job that is going to be inserting this. I already wrote it, but I wanna show it to you. So I have these two images that I want to load, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two buttons. One is gonna be to load the first one, that way we can try to track this second one where it's not gonna be in the library, so therefore nothing will happen. And then we'll have a second button that is gonna load this one so that we can say, okay, now we can track both. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and load them to me, my actual Unity application. So let me go ahead and go into the image library. And I'm also going to give it names. So this one we can just call it, we can just call it game one. Let's call it game, game frame, one and then we can just do the same thing with the other one game frame two and that's fine and then i'll go ahead and drop them into the unity project and let's just give it a second here and then one thing that we need to make sure is we need to make sure that the texture format compression is set up correctly so when you load it through unity and you use the unity editor to add the images to the reference library Unity does that for you, but if you don't, if you do it through code, you want to make sure that you have the images compressed correctly. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that we need to do before we get images to load dynamically. So I'm going to look at the the car gym that I already imported. So and actually, well, I think what what we want to do is let's go ahead and look at the Neater's car that I imported because that one has the that one has the correct formatting on the compression. So this is the one that we want to we want to work with. So the couple of things that we need to make sure that we have enabled is we need to make sure that this texture is read and write. And the reason why we need that is because we're gonna need to read the information from the texture. That happens when we add a job and we and we send a job right to the to iOS. So this is gonna have read and write enabled, and then we're also going to make sure that we have RGBA 32-bit enabled that's going to be our texture compression. If we don't have a supported format, then the, the image won't, be, won't get at it. So those are some, some of the things that we'll need to do. So let's go ahead and do that on these two new images. I'm gonna change these to, let's go ahead and go into and select the RGBA 32-bit. Let's hit apply. And then I'm also going to make sure that I have them read and write enable. So I'm gonna hit apply. And let's just double check that everything, everything looks good. Yep, apply and yep, everything matches up. So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and go into the image library. I'm still gonna load an image library, but it's not gonna have these images in, you know, when the game loads. And let me just show you that. So let me go, I'm not used to these views, so let me go into the list view. And I have this runtime image library, and this is a trick, and I don't know if it's a bug by AR Foundation, but you have to have at least one image in your reference library. This is not gonna be the one that we're gonna be loading dynamically. So I just added the Unity logo there by default. If I don't have anything in here, I get an exception when I run this on the device. So just make sure that you have one image at least. And then if you wanna load other things dynamically, you can do so because there's already one there. So we're gonna be adding these other images dynamically. So let's go ahead and go into my AR session origin. So here we have the components that I had previously, the AR session origin. And we also have one that I just created, which is called Track Image Info Runtime Save Manager. The reason why I call it Runtime Save is because the texture that we have here, the dynamic texture, is gonna get loaded into this library at runtime. We're not gonna load it, you know, when we, when we're, we're not gonna load it through Unity, we're gonna run it, load it when we press the, the one of the buttons that I'm gonna be adding in, in the iOS device. So the first thing that I want to do is now that you've seen what I have here, let's go ahead and add a couple of buttons because we're gonna need those for 
loading them and then I'm also going to go into another scene so we can borrow we can borrow some of those let's go ahead and go into this one here and then I'm just gonna copy an existing button so that we don't have to create it and then let's go back into our scene which is going to be called the image tracking runtime and there you go and then another thing that I was working on I was working on the let me go ahead and change this back because I was trying to make sure that I, I work on a feature for a future video that was going to allow me to select a range in the in the video feed so that I can save it as an image. But I'm not ready for that, so I'm just going to change this back to a screen a space overlay. Okay, so now that we have that enabled, let me make sure that we go here and we create two buttons. So this one is going to be, and we're, we don't have a lot of room, but that's okay. We're dealing with images, so and it's gonna be the video feed, so that's fine. And then, let me go ahead and, so this one is gonna be negative three, negative A63, so I'm just gonna make this one the same. And in fact, I'm going to just move them both to the bottom. Let's change the anchor there. This one is gonna be load first texture button. And then this one is gonna be the load second texture button. There we go, and then just move them, just move it on the side, and just keep them kind of center. I think that's fine, perfect. And then let's just change the text. This one is gonna be first texture, and then we'll do the same thing with the second one, but we'll just call it second, second texture. All right, awesome. So now that we have those two there. The next thing that I need to do is I'm going to have to do some refactoring on the component that I have because right now it only takes one dynamics texture. And then the the other thing that I don't have is I don't have a way to bind the this one and, and this one with the script. So we're going to have to change basically change the script. So let me go ahead and load it. And let's see. There we go. Let me just close this. And I always like to go into assets and then open C Share project. And there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and work, work on the buttons first. So I'm going to just duplicate this twice. There we go. And then I'll just call this one button. And then we'll do the same thing with this one right here. This one is going to be the first texture button. And then we'll just call this one second texture button. Okay, so everything looks good there. And then so far, the let me just let me walk you through through this before we add the handler because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to make changes to this component before I add a handler. The the reason for that is because right now this is just loading. If I go up here, it's loading this texture 2D and this texture 2D is getting added as a job. So let me let me walk you through the to the script before we continue. So I show you some of the components that we already have. So we have a debug log, a job log. The current image that gets selected text gets display. This one is used for debugging purposes, and this one is just so that we know when the image has been loaded and added to the device. The the other things that I that I also have is the current image text, like I explained to you, so we know which image is currently getting detected. These are the two buttons that we just added. This is going to be the prefab that gets instantiated at the position of the image when it gets detected. We just have a scale factor so that we don't go, you know, enormous on size. I just basically do 0.1. This is all in meters, so that's why it's so small. And then I also have a runtime image library. This is have the Unity logo. We also need an AR track image manager, which is basically responsible for tracking the image. I already explained that to you in the last three to four videos. If you haven't watched those, make sure you watch those. And then this is just an image texture that I have that I la that I'm loading dynamically. What I'm gonna do for this, I'm going to be changing the way that that works, but we'll do that in a second. And then on the start, I'm basically just doing setup, just adding a AR track image manager component. I I'm also creating a runtime library by passing in the library that I have as a reference. I tell it how many moving images I can have at once. I tell the system how many actually what the track what the image prefab is gonna is going to be for instantiation. I also enable this at this point because when you create this dynamically, it's going to be set by to disable by default because it's basically requesting 
is requiring a reference library when it, when it gets instantiated. Because we don't have it yet, we have to enable it thereafter. Then I have my event handler for when the track images change. I show some debugging info. And then I have a, score, a core routine that I'm executing to add, basically to add the image. We'll need to refactor this, but I'll show you what it does right now. So when when this gets executed, this is executing basically on as an I enumerator, as a core routine. So I change, I have some debug logging all throughout this so that I know the progress of adding the image. So I'm saying adding, you know, add an image job, or we can just probably say add adding image image. We're going to just say adding image. I think that's fine. And then on the job log, I say job starting. This is going to be just a label that gets changed as the status change. This is going to be more debugging, so I'm just doing an append. These are just two goods for the texture that I'm adding. So I'm always, I, I was looking at the implementation of these, and they have a serialized good. If you set it to 0, 0, the system, basically, that's going to be like saying uh, an empty good. So it requires that we have empty goods on this first one and also on the second parameter. So, and then I'm using that when I create a reference image. So some of the parameters here are gonna be, you know, the serialized good, which is the first parameter, serialized good as a second parameter, then the size, and then this is a size in meters. So I'm passing in the X and Y because we're dealing with a 2D image. And then I'm also passing a good as the name so if you look at look at the parameters, this is require a name of the image. So I'm just generating an image, an image name. And then I'm passing in the texture, which is the texture that you see up here exposed as a reference. So now that we have an XR reference image, I display some login information. And then, so this took me a little bit of time and it's really not, it, it is kind of documented, but it's, it's not as straightforward. And the way that it works is once you instantiate or you have a reference image library, that could be either a, what's called a runtime reference image library or a mutable runtime reference image library. So mutable is only going to be supported on device that support that. So because I have an iPhone XS, I know that a mutable reference image library is supported. And what does that mean? So mutable means that I can change the library at runtime I can add images, I can update images, and then non-mutable means that it, it can only be set during, you know, just within the start, and then it can be changed at thereafter. So it only changed once. It's very, it's kind of, it's similar to a constant. You can't really change it once it's set. So, so that's why I'm doing as mutable. There are ways to make sure that you check. So if you wanted to check if, if this was supported on the device, I would recommend that you look into doing doing this. So you can say, you know, if track manager, and then you can access the subsystem, and then you can access the subsystem descriptor, and then you can say, you can look and say, okay, that's a support immutable library. If it does support immutable library, then you wanna do this. Otherwise you want to, you know, do something else depending on your implementation. So I'm just gonna delete that. So, and then just, and just basically, you know, basically projecting that to, or converting that to a, a mutable runtime ref, reference image library. And then that way I can use this for adding, adding images to it thereafter. And then I'm just basically some login information to see if the texture is supported, the, the texture format is supported. And then this is the, this is the one that does most of the work. And this is the reason why I'm doing this as an enumerator because I want to keep checking until it's complete. So if you want to schedule adding an image job, all you have to do is just basically passing a, a texture to D, and then you gotta tell it what the name of the of this image is going to be. So I'm, again, I'm using just the same good. I could have just created one good and then assigned it to this one. I think in this case it's just fine. And then the last parameter it's going to be the size in meters. So this is different to the extra, the extra reference image. This is the actual image getting added as a trackable image but to the framework. So once I done that and I make that call, this is all getting executed as a Unity job. So I get a job handle back. And if I hover over this, you can see it's a job handle type. So what I'm doing, I just have a while loop saying, okay, if we haven't completed, this is gonna be the state of the job, of the job log. And then as soon as we complete it, I change the state which you know makes me get out of the loop and then i'm just basically displaying some login information just for 
just for debugging purposes. And I'm also catching an exception because I had a lot of issues with making sure this was working. So, so this is great. The, the next thing that we're going to need to do is I only have one texture and I need two textures. So I'm just going to say we can either do, we could do an array. We can do, let's just, just do one, one at a time. We can just say first texture. And then we can also add one for the second texture. And I can just add it there. Awesome. So what I'm doing right now is, you know how I'm passing in, this is basically the one from the, from the, the well, the one that I had before that I just renamed. So I'm going to change this to basically passing a texture 2D. That way I can tell the system, okay, what tech, what image I want to load. So I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be the texture 2D image that I want to load. That way we can, you know, it can be more dynamic. We can just change this, change this, change this. And there we go. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be clearing the log because if I don't clear the log, I'm going to get, it's just going to be, we can do, we can do that after. Actually, we can do it right here before we start. So let's go ahead and do a string that empty to clear the log. It's going to be the, the log display on the canvas. So we'll just, you know, empty it out. There we go. Just thinking, my, my head is thinking and changing to dynamic mode <laughs> just to make sure this is going to work. Okay, so it looks good. So now this is requiring that I pass in, that I basically pass in a texture. So we're not going to do this right at this point. We're going to do it differently. And actually what I'm going to do, I think it's going to make it easier. We're going to be binding our events. So let's grab the first event here. And I'm just going to bind it by just doing an on-click, a listener. And what I'll do for this one is we'll add a listener. Let me see if I can do it this way. If I can add a core routine, and then this is going to be the first texture. OK, yeah, that works. That's awesome. And then I'll do this, the, the, the same thing for the second one. And OK, and let me make sure that I type that correctly. And this is going to be the second texture. So I'm just using a Lambda here to bind the onclick event to this core routine that, that is add image job. And then I'm basically passing which texture I want, first texture or second texture. So this is going to happen when I click either the first button or the second button. So I think that's honestly everything. I thought it was going to be more work. But I think that's everything. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to Unity, and let me just make sure that I have a couple of things here set. So the other thing that I want to do before I keep going is I want to change the prefab that gets instantiated. I'm going to be using. Let me go into my prefabs, and then I'm going to be using the Alver Marble. Let's go ahead and use that one. That's going to be the prefab. And if you haven't looked at that one, that's going to be, let me go ahead and add it and you can look at it. It's going to be basically Albert Einstein and it's going to have a label on top. So let's go ahead and remove it. Let's go back into my canvas and let's go back into AR Session Origin. And I'm going to associate the events, well, actually the buttons, so that we can call the events. And then I'm also going to do that one with the second button. And then I also need the texture. So let's go into my image library and add the textures that we're going to be adding. So I want to add this one first, and then we're going to be adding this one after. OK, so I think everything looks good. So now what I'm going to need to do is let's go ahead and build it, go into my build settings. And I believe I already have this scene added. Let me make sure image tracking runtime safe. It looks good. I'm going to go into build. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Yes, go ahead and replace it. Append, replace. All right, and this is going to take a few seconds. So I'm going to build it to my device, and I'll show you the results as soon as this is completed. All right, guys, so I got the build ready for you, and I also took a video of a demo. So let me go ahead and show it to you. So I'm just going to hit play. So you can see that I haven't pressed the buttons yet. Now job completed, meaning that I loaded an image. This is the, the first image. You can see that I can rotate, and Albert Einstein is sitting on top. And if I go to this one, I'm going to also load it, job completed. And now the second image gets added. So this is working really well. It's a little bit jittery if I change the angle of the camera. 
but I think for the most part it works. It's doing a lot to, you know, to track the images in an angle and at the same time being able to track, you know, multiple images in the library. <laughs> like you can see what it's doing now. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys and if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments and again don't forget to subscribe and also find me in patreon.com and your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you guys.